staying cool when you're waiting for someone that you really like to text you back is one of the most challenging things there is. And so today I wanted to bring you the master at how to stay cool when you're waiting for a text back. And today we're gonna to bring you three strategies that will really serve you. Stay tuned. So let's set the scene for you for a moment. By now you probably know who this is. This is my amazing wife, Irene Boggs. Hello. And when we met, we were long distance. I was living in Oregon. She was living a thousand miles away in California. We met at a wedding expo. We were both working and I saw her. She blew my mind. I was like, whoa, who is that? We'll tell you that story some other time. But I ended up getting your email, getting your number, and we start communicating. Mm -hmm. Now, I did not want to date this woman. <laughs> I didn't want to. I didn't want to date a woman who was a thousand miles away. I wanted to meet someone in Oregon. Yeah. We were both dating other people. We yeah. said, hey, we're, you know, we're just dating other people. Let's keep it light and kind of explore this. But I was calling you, texting you. We were starting to talk, build a romance together. And so because I was in Oregon, I was and not wanting to date her, mind you, wanting to find somebody up there. I would let long stretches go, like, you know, four days, five days between texting and calling early in our courtship. And so what was that experience like for you? What was going on? And what were some of the things you did to stay cool? Because, man, she was cool as a cucumber. <laughs> well, thank you. It wasn't that easy to stay cool as a cucumber. And I had a lot going on at that time. Um, so on one level, as I would wait for the text, I could hear my mom in my ear saying, don't go find him, let him come and find you, don't go chasing him and don't bother him, leave him alone. He's got a lot of stuff going on too. So I could hear my mom in my ear saying that and that's what would keep me in my grounded state and just say, okay, when he wants to call, he'll come and find me, it's totally fine. And I was going to undergrad school at the time, and so I was getting my undergrad in biology, and I had lots to do. I had a lot on my plate. So on one level, yeah, it was keeping cool, and at the same time, I had a lot going on. So I kept really busy, and... Um, I think that helps. When you're yeah. living your great life, you were pursuing a dream of yours to yes, get that degree. Absolutely. And when you're living your best life and you're filling your life up with things that matter to you, it becomes much easier than when you're just waiting around for his text back, right? When you find yourself just waiting and twiddling your thumbs and just looking at the phone and checking it multiple times, know this, you're torturing yourself. That is torturing yourself instead. And so this is the first principle is create your best life. Create that best life. In other words, get busy doing something that improves yourself or get busy doing something where you can be a blessing to someone else's life. One of the easiest ways to eliminate suffering is to take the focus off of yourself and put it on somebody else. And so whether that's volunteering, whether that's calling somebody that could really use uh, an uplifting voice at that moment or giving back or anything like that is going to help eliminate the the whirlwind of what's he doing what's going on why is he not texting me so number one is create your best life what else did you do well i knew you were dating other people and i was also dating other people but i didn't really allow my mind to go there i didn't want to think about you with somebody else i mean there wasn't any point for me to go there mentally so i just left it as is like okay he's doing his thing no big deal um so i kept it clear clean like, in my mind easier said than done right like you hear her say that and you're like wow because the mind wants to race the mind wants to think all kinds of things that, true. that that what is he doing why is he not calling now who, i'm not saying out with? that i didn't think that stuff but when it came to the moment of thinking it was like okay that's go away not a like don't even focus on that yeah so number two is guard your thoughts only entertain thoughts that serve you in other words, you wanna be honest with yourself about what might be going on, but there's a difference between just noticing what might be going on and torturing yourself with thoughts of what he might be doing, who he might be doing those things with other than you. And so cast those thoughts to the side, 
Guard your thoughts, only choose thoughts that serve you in that moment for creating a positive emotion in you and moving forward in your love life. Now there's one other move that you did in relation to you living your best life and being in school that I think served you really well, that no matter what life we're living, we can use that same technique. And I don't know if you did this consciously or not, but I think it's valuable to know. And what was that? I left my phone in a different room every time I'd study. I always needed that full on dedicated, like don't, I don't even want to hear a pin drop on the floor. Like I needed complete quiet and absolute focus. And so I'd leave my phone in a different room so that that way if it vibrated or it rang or whatever, I didn't get distracted with that. And I think that's, when we looked at that, I thought well, that's a brilliant move even today. If you're not obviously in school or, or studying, you need that focus. The phone is a little ad addiction device. Definitely. And we all know it, we're all addicted to our phones. And so when you have something that you're addicted to and it's right there, it's impossible to keep yourself from com being compelled to check it. So instead, what would it look like to actually leave the phone in another room, go for a run? Mm -hmm. Go do something and not have the phone around you. Like imagine if you're addicted to sugar and you've got the most delicious piece <laughs> of cake in a glass jar, right? Right there and you're like, I want that cake. Like I want it, yeah. I want it, but you can't have it. And it's just torturing you because it's right in your, your, your perspective. So take the phone, leave it somewhere, give yourself, you'll notice your whole mental energy, your nervous system actually relax a bit when you just take, you know, I'm gonna take my phone and put it away for a couple hours. I'm gonna watch a movie, I'm gonna go for a run, I'm gonna clean up, I'll clean the, cl the, the closet out, yeah. whatever you're gonna do, but without your phone, give yourself that sense of peace and that break and it will serve you. So, we hope these tips have, have helped you. Yeah. We know that it's tough, but we also know this. If this is the right guy, he will come through. It's gonna work out. We were long distance and it worked out. I was trying to date someone else, other girls, and it worked out. She was dating other guys and it worked out. I will often say this, it is hard to screw up the right thing. If it's gonna work out with him, there will be a way that the two of you come together. Trust in that. Trust in the universe supporting you and amazing things will happen. Now, I wanna hear from you. How do you keep your cool when waiting for a text? Go ahead and put that in the comment section below. And if you like this video, go ahead and hit the subscribe button or the little bell and every week, Matt's putting out some great videos for you to watch, just for you. That was really good. Thank you. That was really good. I like it. All right. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you soon.